<clears throat> the hills are alive with the sound of music. Victoria, Victoria, how many times have I told you you didn't get the part? I'm really sorry about that, everyone. Sorry. Um, on a more important note, can everyone whose name is Mike please stand up? Thank you. That's good. You can sit back down now. Okay, that concludes our mic check. Um, I'm. S <laughs> um, I'm Sagar. I'm one of the assistant directors for The Sound of Music. And I'm Victoria, the other assistant director. And after two and a half years without them, we are very excited to welcome you back to a Black Masters musical production. Um, before the show begins, we just want to bring your attention to a few important things. In the case of an emergency, there are four marked exits there and there. Please also keep the aisles clear throughout the show as actors will be moving up and down them. Uh, please silence your cell phones and avoid using flash photography or videotaping the show as that can be distracting and dangerous to the actors. In addition, in Act 1, Scene 7, we will be using flashing lights on stage, so please be careful of that. Oh, we also want to briefly address the historical context of this play, which takes place before and after the Anschluss in Austria. And although Nazism or the Holocaust are never explicitly mentioned, we do feel they are important to our, uh, a modern interpretation and understanding of the play. In Act 2, Scene 6, we will be using Nazi banners on stage to accurately portray the time period. But we do understand that is deeply uncomfortable for a lot of people. And if that is the case, we invite you to step out into the lobby for about 10 minutes as that scene occurs. In addition, we have a donation box in the lobby uh, where proceeds will be going to the Holocaust Museum. But above all, this is a show about combating hatred through love, family, and music. So we hope you enjoy. There will also be a 10 minute intermission between the two acts. Please wait to get out of your seat until the curtains have closed and the house lights are on. During this time, uh, there will be a concession stand outside selling food. Uh, and finally, we just want to thank a few people without whom the show would not have been possible. Ms. Eiler, um, our choral director, Dr. Perry, our orchestra pit director, Mr. Rodney, our everything man, um, and of course, Ms. Davis, who very graciously returned to direct the show. We have had so much fun working on this show, and we hope that you enjoy it as much as we have these past few weeks. So enjoy the show. <sighs> He's finally gone. <clears throat> Climb every mountain, ford every
star has come out to tell me it's time to go but deep in the dark green shadows there are voices that urge me to stay so i pause and i wait and i listen for one more sound for one more lovely thing that the hills might say the hills are alive with the sound of music with songs they have sung for a thousand years the hills fill my heart with the sound of music my heart wants to sing every song it hears my heart wants to beat like the wings of the birds that rise from the lake to the trees my heart wants to sigh like a chime that flies from a church on a breeze to laugh like a brook as it trips and falls over stones in its way to sing through the night like a lark who is learning to pray i go to the hills when my heart is lonely i know i will hear what i've heard before my heart will be blessed with the sound of music and i'll like a chime that flies from a church on a breeze to laugh like a brook as it trips and falls over stones in its way to sing through the night like a lark who is learning to pray I go to the hills when my heart is lonely. I know I will hear what I've heard before. My heart will be blessed with the sound of me. I'll sing once more. 
Let's consider the dark ones again. There's Ermagard. Reverend Mother, there's no doubt about Ermagard. The religious life is no place for the pious. You mean the pretentiously pious, Sister Bertha. There's Christina. And there's Maria. Well, after last night, I don't think there can be any doubt in the Reverend Mother's mind about Maria. I gave her permission to leave the Abbey for the day. I told you, Sister Bertha. Ave. Reverend Mother, I've brought Maria. She's waiting. Sister Sophia, the mistress of the postulants and the mistress of the novices don't see eye to eye about Maria. How do you feel about her? I love her very dearly, but she always seems to be getting in trouble now, doesn't she? Exactly what I say. She climbs a tree and scrapes her knee. Her dress has got a tear. She waltzes on her way to mass and whistles on the stair. And underneath her wimple, she has curlers in her hair. I've even heard her singing in the Abbey. She's always late for chapel, but her penitence is real. She's always late for everything except for every meal. I hate to have to say it, but I very firmly feel Maria's not an asset to the Abbey. I'd like to say a word in her behalf. Then say it, Sister Margretta. Maria makes me laugh. <laughs> I want to talk to you. Mm. 
Yes, about last night. Reverend Mother, I was on my knees half the night because I'd been late, and after you'd been so kind and given me permission to leave. It wasn't about your being late, Maria. Well, I must have awakened half the abbey before Sister Sophia heard me and opened the gates. Hardly any of us were asleep. We could only think you had lost your way and at night on that mountain. Reverend Mother, I couldn't be lost on that mountain. That's my mountain. I was brought up on it. It was that mountain which brought me to you. Oh, when I was a little girl, I'd come down the mountain, climb the tree, and look over into your garden. I would see the sisters at work and hear them sing on their way to Vespers. Many times I went back up that mountain in the dark, singing all the way. And that brings me to another transgression. I was singing yesterday, and I was singing without your permission. Maria, it is only here in the Abbey where there's a rule about singing. That's the hardest rule of all for me. Sister Margareta is always reminding me, but too late, after I've started singing. And that day you were singing in the garden at the top of your voice. But Mother, it's that kind of song. I came to the window, and when you saw me, you stopped. Yes, that's been on my mind ever since it happened. Been on my mind too. I wish you hadn't stopped. I used to sing that song when I was a little girl and I can't quite remember. Please. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied. Snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes Silver white winters that melt into springs These are a few of my favorite things When the dog bites, when the bee stings When I'm feeling sad I simply remember my favorite things And then I don't be Better. Mother, where did you learn that song? I grew up on the mountains myself. Maria, in spite of what you saw over the abbey wall, you weren't ready for the way we live, were you? No, but I pray and I try. Maria, 
What is the most important thing you've learned here? To find out what is the will of God and to do it, even if it's hard to accept. Even then, Maria, is the dress you wore when you first came to us still in the robing room? Oh, I'm sure it's been given to the poor. Sister Margareta says that when we enter the abbey, all our worldly clothes. Hey, Reverend Mother, why do you ask? Maria, it seems to be the will of God that you leave us. Leave? Leave here? Oh no, Mother! Please no! Only for a short while, Maria. Don't send me away. This is what I want. This is my life. But are you ready for it? Perhaps, if you were to go out into the world for a short time, you would return to us knowing what we expect and that we do expect it. I know what you expect of me, and I'll do it. I promise, Maria. If it is God's will, where am I to go? There's a family, a family of seven children. You like children. You're very good with them. They need a governess until September. Until September? Captain von Trapp expects you this afternoon. He's a fine man and a brave one. He was given the Maria Theresa Award by the Emperor. It was for heroism in the Adriatic. A captain in the navy? Oh, mother, he'll be very strict. You aren't being sent to his battleship, Maria. God bless you, Maria. Reverend Mother, have I your permission to sing? Yes, my child. Been given permission to sing. Brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes. Snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, silver-white winters that melt into springs. These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad, I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel. So bad. Hold a moonbeam in your hand. Yes, sir. I was calling the housekeeper, and she didn't answer. Do you know why? Sometimes she doesn't hear, sir. Uh, I'm so sorry, sir. I was answering the telephone. Um, uh, good day, sir. We're happy to have you home again. Why did the last governess leave?、Uh, who knows? She said I've had enough and walked out. Why was Louisa playing tricks on her again, putting toads in her bed? She complained of that, sir. Well, there's another one coming today, and this one can't walk out. Oh? She's coming from Nunberg Abbey with orders to stay until September. I uh. Do hope you'll be at home for a time, sir. Just until tomorrow. The telephone call was it for me? Ah,、uh, no, sir. It's for Franz. But before you arrived, there was a call from Vienna. A Frau Schrader. I have the number. I know the number. I shall be back in about a month with some guests.、Uh, yes, sir. Do, wait, do you know how many, sir? Just two. Herr Detweiler. Ah, Herr Detweiler. And Frau Schrader. Who wanted me on the telephone? Oh,、uh, it was the post office. They've got a telegram for you. It will be delivered at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. There will be five hours to be there. 
With that scatterbrained boy delivering telegrams? Well, that's one thing people have said. If the Germans did take over Austria, we'd have efficiency. Don't let the captain hear you say that. You know, he didn't whistle for us when his wife was alive. He's being the captain of a ship again. Well, I can't bear to be whistled for. It, it's humiliating. In the Imperial Navy, the bosun always whistled for us. Well, I wasn't in the Imperial Navy. Too bad. You could have made a fortune. You will wait here. I'm Captain Von Trapp. You are Fräulein? Maria. Maria Rayner. Now, Fräulein, as to your duties here... Would you mind stepping over there? Before the children meet you, you will put on another dress. Well, I haven't any other dress. When we enter the Abbey, all our worldly clothes are given to the poor. What about this one? The poor didn't want this one. This is what you would call a worldly dress? It belonged to our last postulant. I would have made myself another dress, but I wasn't given the time. I can make my own clothes. Good. I'll see that you're given some material. Today, if possible. Now, you will be in charge of my children. There are seven of them. You'll find out how far they have progressed in their studies and carry on from there. Each morning will be spent in the classroom. Each afternoon, they march. You will see that at all times, they conduct themselves with decorum and orderliness. The first rule in this house is discipline. Yes, sir. This is your new governess, Fräulein Maria. As I sound your signal, you will step forward and repeat your name. You, Fräulein, will listen and learn their signals so that you can call them when you want them. Liesel! Friedrich! Louisa! Kurt! Brigitte! Yes, sir. This is my orderly, my butler, Fräulein Maria. Yes, sir. That is my executive officer, my housekeeper, Frau Schmidt. Fräulein Maria, please be sure that her room is ready. Yes, sir. Well, I shall now leave you with the children. You are in command. Pardon me, sir, I don't know how to address you. You will call me Captain. 
Thank you, Captain. I forgot to return this whistle, Captain. I won't be needing it, Captain. Well, now that it's just us, will you tell me your names again and tell me how old you are? Now you're. I'm Liesel. I'm 16 years old, and I don't need a governess. I'm glad you told me. We'll just be friends. I'm Friedrich. I'm 14, and a boy. <laughs> a boy? Why, you're almost a man. I'm Brigitte. You didn't tell me how old you are, Louisa. I'm Brigitte. She's Louisa, and she's 13 years old. And you're smart. I'm nine, and I think your dress is the ugliest one I ever saw. Brigitte, you mustn't say anything like that. Why not? Don't you think it's ugly? If I did think so, I wouldn't say so. I'm Kurt. I'm 11. Almost. <laughs> now that's a nice age to be. 11. Almost. I'm Marta, and I'll be seven on Tuesday. And I'd like a pink parasol. Pink is my favorite color, too. And you're Gretel. And you're five years old? I'm going to tell you something. I've never been a governess before. How do I start? You mean, you don't know anything about being a governess? No. Well, the first thing you have to do is tell father to mind his own business. No, Louisa, don't. I like her. What's in here? My guitar. What did you bring this for? For when we all sing together. We don't sing. Of course you sing. Everybody sings. Well, what songs do you know? We don't know any songs. You don't? No. no. Well, now I know where to start. I'm going to teach you how to sing. All together. 
One word for every note? Yes, Brigitte, I did. But when you sing anything, do you use up to three notes on one word? Yes, well, sometimes we do that. Now, all together, and... When you know the notes to sing, you can sing most Lisa, you don't have to say goodnight to me this early, just because your father's home. <laughs> now, how did you know my father's home? Oh, I have a way of knowing things. You're wonderful. Oh, no, I'm not, really. Oh, yes, you are. I mean, how could you have known two days ago that you'd be here at exactly this time tonight with a telegram for Franz? Well, every year, on this date, he gets a birthday telegram from his sister. You see, you are wonderful. Can I come again tomorrow night? Rolf, you can't be sure you're going to have another telegram to deliver here tomorrow night. I could come here by mistake with a telegram for Colonel Schneider. He's here from Berlin. He's staying with the Gulliter. No one's supposed to know he's here. And don't you tell your father. Why not? Well, your father's pretty Austrian. We're all Austrian. Some people think we ought to be German. They're pretty mad at those who don't think so. They're getting ready to... Let's just hope your father doesn't get into any trouble. Oh, don't worry about father. He was decorated for his bravery. Oh, I know. I don't worry about him, not a deal. The only one I worry about is his daughter. Me? Why? How old are you? I think so. Sixteen? What's wrong with that? Wait. 
sweet little girl on an empty stage for fame to turn the light on. Your life, little girl, is an empty page that men will want to write on. To write on. You are 16, going on 17, baby. It's time to
for their children. They have to climb trees, roll in the grass, think of all the rocks and the caves. The captain says the best exercise is marching. The children will continue to march. I hope you find your room comfortable. Yes, thank you. There will be new curtains for the window of the alcove, and they will be home tomorrow. But these curtains are very good. There will be new curtains. Uh, will the captain be away long? Uh, I don't know. Of course, he has to come home every time he hires a new governess. Sometimes I think the children get rid of their governesses just because they want to see their father. Oh, he must want to see them, too. Ever since his wife died, they remind him too much of her. You can put that away. You won't be using it. Why not? <laughs> the captain won't have music here. He won't have music. And he used to love music. There are wonderful evenings here. His wife could sing, he played the violin or guitar. But uh, now he's pushed all that out of his life. So that's why he is the way he is. Well, but not to have music, that's wrong for him. And wrong for the children, too. It will work out. The captain may marry again before the summer is over. Well, that would change everything. They'd have a mother again. Um, you better close your window, it's going to rain. Dear God, I know now that you've sent me here on a mission. I must help these children love their new mother and prepare them to win her love so that she will never want them to leave her. And I pray that this will become a happy family in thy sight. God bless the captain, God bless Liesel, Friedrich, Louisa, Brigitta, Marta, and little Gretel, and... Oh, I forgot the other boy. What's his name? Well, God bless what's his name. God bless the Reverend Mother, God bless Sister Margareta, and everybody at Nonberg Abbey. And now, dear God, about Liesel. Help her to know that I'm her friend, and help her to tell me what she's up to. Are you going to tell on me? Help me to be understanding so that I may guide her footsteps. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, you see, I was going out for a walk, and somebody locked the doors earlier than they usually do, and I didn't want to wake everybody up. So when I saw that your window was open, I just... Are you going to tell Father? Did you climb that trellis to get up here? Yes, that's how we always used to climb up here to play tricks on the governesses. Louisa can climb it with a toad in her hand. Liesel, were you out walking all by yourself? You know, if we wash that dress out tonight, nobody will notice it tomorrow. Then all of this will just be between you and me. Uh, you could put this on. Take your dress in there and leave it to soak in the bathtub. Then come back out here, sit on the edge of my bed, and we'll have a little talk. Today I told you that I don't need a governess. Well, maybe I do. Oh, it's you, Gretel. Are you afraid? Oh, you're not afraid of a little thunderstorm, are you? Well, you just stay right here with me. Where are the others? They're asleep. They're not scared. Wait for me. Oh, no. Look. Oh, come, all of you, up on the bed. Now all we have to do is wait for the boys. We won't see them. The boys are brave. You boys aren't afraid too, are you? Oh, no. We just wanted to be sure. You weren't. <laughs> was this your idea, Friedrich? Oh, no. He was Kurt's. Kurt! That's the one I left out. God bless Kurt. The lightning says something to the thunder, and the thunder answers it back. I wish it wouldn't answer so loud. Maybe if we all sing loud enough, we won't hear the thunder. Thank you. 
Did you tell Herr Detweiler we're having coffee out here? Yes, sir. Herr Detweiler is still on telephone. Frau Schrader? Oh, thank you. No sign of the children, Franz? Not yet, sir. Georg, these mountains, they're magnificent. Yes, they're not like any other mountains. They're friendly. And look, that green stretch of woods over there, when the wind moves through it, it's like a restless sea. <laughs> And that sweet little village. That's not a village, that's a town. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt its feelings. It's fun being with you. You're quite an experience for me. You're quite an experience for me, too. Somewhere in you there's a fascinating man. Occasionally I catch a glimpse of him. And when I do, he's exciting. Exciting? I've never been called exciting before. I'm beginning to understand you better now that I see you here. You know, you're a little like those mountains, except that you keep moving. How can you stand to be away from this place as much as you are? Maybe I've been searching for a reason to come back to stay. Georg, I like it here very much. Max can't still be on the telephone. <laughs> I know he's desperate about getting singers for the Kaltzberg Festival, but I... You like it here. We'd have to spend some time in Vienna. I have Heinrich's estate to look after. I thought that was a corporation now. <laughs> it is, and I'm president. You? President of a corporation? <laughs> well, I managed Heinrich's affairs for years before he died. I can't see you sitting behind a desk. <laughs> well, of course. I wear a business suit and smoke a big cigar. <laughs> Excuse me, Captain. Herr Detweiler would like his coffee. While he's telephoning? He just finished. Oh, sorry I'm late. Any luck? How would you like this for the Kaltzberg Festival? The finest choir in Austria, the greatest mixed quartet in all Europe, and the best soprano in the world! Max, that's something I'd love to hear. So would I. All I've got now is a basso who isn't even profundo. Max, you always come up with a good festival concert. And why? Because my motto is, 
Never start out looking for the people you wind up getting. That's why I've been telephoning all over. Paris, Rome, Stockholm, London. On Georg's telephone? Well, of course. How else could I afford it? Why am I up here? I hoped it was because you liked me. Oh, Georg, of course I like you. How could I not like you? You live like a king. You have an excellent wine cellar. Max! What, Elsa? I like rich people. Oh. I like the way they live. I like the way I live when I'm with them. Speaking as a government official, Georg, I... Is there a cathedral around here? That's our abbey, Nunberg Abbey. Do they have a choir? A beautiful one. Oh, good. In the next few days, I have to visit all these little towns, listen to Sangerbund's choirs, quartets. You'll be here for meals, won't you? Oh, yes. It was, it was a town, just about that size. Watsman, where I discovered the St. Ignatius Boys Choir. In 1930, they won the festival, became very famous and toured all over the world. Oh, yes. Whatever became of them? By the time their voices changed, they were rich enough to live in America. <laughs> <laughs> Who lives in that dilapidated castle down there? Rumpelstiltskin? Baron Elberfeld, the oldest family in the valley. I'd like to meet him. I'd like to meet all your friends. Georg, why don't you have a dinner for me while I'm here? Nothing very much, just something lavish. I wouldn't know whom to invite. Today it's difficult to tell who's a friend and who's an enemy. Now's not a good time to make enemies. Let's make some friends. I can't understand what's happened to the children. You're not worried about them, are you? They should have been here to welcome you. Oh, well, it couldn't have been an intentional slight because they haven't met me yet. Forgive me, I'll try to find them. Elsa, Elsa, have you made up Georg's mind yet? Is he going to marry you? Oh, yes. He hasn't admitted it yet. There seems to be something standing in his way. You don't know what it is? No. I do. What? It's very simple, Elsa. It's money. Money? Yes. He's rich and you're rich. In all the famous love affairs, the lovers have to struggle. In garret rooms away upstairs, the lovers starve and snuggle. Their famous for misfortune, which they seem to have no fear of. While lovers who are very rich, you very seldom hear of. Not a sign of them anywhere. <laughs> No, little shack, do you share with me? We do not flee from a mortgagee. Nary a care in the world have we. How can love survive? You're fond of bonds and you own a lot. I have a plane and a diesel yet. Plenty of nothing you haven't got. How can love survive? No rides for us on the top of a bus in the face of the freezing breezes. You reach your goals in your comfy old rolls or in one of your Mercedes. Far, very far off the beam are we. Quaint and bizarre as a team, are we? Two millionaires with a dream, are we? We're keeping romance alive. Two millionaires with a dream, are we? We'll make our love survive. No.
likes. Taylor, why haven't you told me how enchanting your children are?
You got a German blood, not haven't you? I'm not a German, I'm an Austrian. Well, there's going to be an Anschluss, I warn you, and I don't like you. And that goes for our... It's much more pleasant on the terrace. Elberfeld, it's very nice to have you and the Baroness here again. Frau Schrader's charming, Georg. I hope she isn't ill. Oh no, just a headache. I'm on my way up to get her. We'll find you on the terrace. Father, I don't think these people are having a very good time. Half the people I invited aren't speaking to the other half. Well, Father, maybe they're having a good time not speaking to each other. Oh, uh, sir, uh, Frau Schrader asked me to let you know that she will join you in a few minutes. Thank you. You might see whether she would like this glass of brandy. Oh, Kurt, I haven't danced the leather since I was a little girl. Oh, you remember it. Show me. No, I haven't talked since you said that. Okay, behind the back. Yes, that's right. The first the girl and the boy meet. Yes. And they go for a little stroll. No, Kurt, that's that's wrong. Let me show you. I think she's going to be your new mother. 
Oh, Fraulein, Father's never going to marry her. Why, he couldn't. Why didn't he? Because he's in love with you. Brigitte, now that's just the kind of must to know that. No, Brigitte. Remember the other night when we were all sitting on the floor singing the Edelweiss song you taught us? After we finished, you laughed at him for forgetting the words. He didn't forget the words, he just stopped singing to look at you. And when he speaks to you, the way his voice sounds? No, Brigitte. And just now, when you were dancing together, the way you looked at him, you're in love with him! <laughs> One more dance, girdle, and then up to bed. Oh, Maria, you're not going to be having dinner with the children tonight. You're going to be having dinner down here with us. Oh, yes, it's all been arranged. You'll have to hurry. You'll have to change. And, Maria, wear that dress you wore the other night. When we were all singing, it was lovely. Soft and white. Shall I ask dinner, Captain? Oh, oh, no, not yet. Okay, the children don't want to say goodnight. Georg, I wanted them to sing the way they did last night. No, Elsa, not here. Please, Georg, the way they did it last night, it was so sweet. No, Elsa, not in front of strangers. Please, Georg, for me. Presto changer. Max, you're just in time. Children, now. <laughs> Ah, 
And you have influence. <gasps> Max! Elsa, it's for Austria. And it wouldn't do me any harm. Sophia, please take our newest postulant to the robing room. God bless you, my daughter. Ave. But she's unhappy too. Why did they send her back? Do you know? She doesn't speak. She hasn't spoken except in prayer. I shall see her. Maria! This must have been a trying experience for you. It was, Reverend Mother. Has it taught you anything? I've learned that I never want to leave these walls again. Maria, why did they send you back to us? They didn't send me back. I left. Sit I down, left Maria. without telling them I was going. Without saying goodbye. Sit down, Maria. Maria, please. what happened? Why did you do this? I was frightened. Frightened? I was confused. I felt... I've never felt that way before. I couldn't stay, and I knew that here I would be away from it, that here I would be safe. Maria, these walls were not meant to be an escape. What is it you can't face? I can't face him again. Thank you, Sister Margretta. <laughs> Maria, are you in love with Captain Von Trapp? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me about it, my child. Brigitte said that I was, and that her father was in love with me. And then there he was. We were looking at each other, and I could hardly breathe. That's when I knew I couldn't stay. But you do like him. Oh, yes. And did you let him know how you felt? If I did, then I didn't know that I did. That's what's been torturing me. I was there on God's errand. To have asked for the captain's love would have been... Wrong. I don't know, Mother. I do know this. I am ready at this very moment to take the vows of poverty, obedience, and chastity. Marie, the love between a man and a woman is holy, too. When you first came to us, you said you remembered your father and mother before they died. Do you remember? Were they happy? Oh, yes, Mother. They were very happy. You were born of their happiness of their love, and you have a great capacity to love. What you must find out is how God wants you to spend your love. I've pledged my life to God's service. I've pledged my life to God. My daughter, just because you love this man does not mean you love God less. You must
must find out. You have to go back. Oh no, Mother, please don't ask me to do that. Please, let me stay here. Maria, these walls were meant to keep out problems. You have to face them. You have to find the life you were born to live. How will I find them? You look for it. It's no good. Imagine you're standing on the stage of a big concert hall. What concert hall, Uncle Max? Any concert hall. Maybe Kaltzberg Concert Hall. But a concert hall full of people. Now, once more. Do Do Why don't you sing loud? I have a sore finger. There. 
Now you can sing loud for Uncle Max. The night of the party, you all sang so beautifully, with such spirit. Let's try one more time. Do Me. to sing for me, the darlings. But they don't sing as well as they used to. We need Fräulein Maria. We do not need Fräulein Maria. You can sing just as well with me. But Georg, I've had experience with choirs, quartets, glee clubs. Max, please. Now what would you like to sing? Do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun, me a name. But Fräulein Maria always. We are not to mention Fräulein Maria. Come on, Max. I feel like a brisk walk. That's just what I need. Um, is anyone using the car? Now, what are we going to sing? Did you play any of your tricks, any of your jokes on Fräulein Maria? Only those she liked and laughed at. You didn't put toads in her bed? No, father. Well, something must have happened for her to leave us without even saying goodbye. Isn't Fräulein Maria coming back? No, darling, I don't think so. But she was the best governess we ever had. You're not going to have a governess anymore. Oh, good. I'm not sure that's good. You're going to have a new mother. A new mother? Frau Schrader. Yes, it was all settled last night. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, it's, it's time for your afternoon walk. When Fräulein Maria wanted to feel better, she used to sing that song, remember? Yes. All right, let's try it. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Don't I feel better? Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes Snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes Silver white winters that melt into trees Two of my favorite things When the dog bites, when the bee stings when I'm feeling sad, I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so bad. <laughs> Children, I'm so happy to see all of you. I must find your father right away. I'll find him. I'll go with you. How's your sore finger? You remember. Liesel, are you all right? Yes, Fräulein. I'm all right. <laughs> Many telegrams lately? No. Well, now I'll be happy to go, to go away to boarding school. Liesel, you can't use boarding school to escape your problems. You have to face them. Oh, I have so much to talk to you about. We have some things to tell you, too. But you must have a great deal to tell me. I guess the most important thing is that Father's going to be married. Married? To Frau Schrader. Are you sure? Yes. He just told us. He told us himself. We found him! <laughs> 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 
Luisa. Luisa, Brigitte, boys, Maria will be in the nursery. You don't come on for a while, you don't you? You've come back. Yes, Captain. It's okay. You left us without any explanation Maybe whatsoever, costume. without even saying goodbye. Costume. It was wrong of me. Forgive me. Why did you do this to us? Tell me. Please don't ask me that. Anyways, the reason no longer exists. Then you're back to stay? Only until you can make arrangements for a new governess. Oh no, you've been missed by the children, I've missed... Everybody missed you very much. Nothing was the same while you were away. Everything was wrong. But I... We'll talk about it later. You go up to the children now. Maria, a new dress. We have a new postulant. I know I'm right, Max. I'll find him and ask him. I'll take your word for it, Elsa. Mm. Georg, settle this for Max and me, will you? How far down the mountain does your property go? Can you make out that stone wall? That's the property line. You see? I didn't argue about it. I know, and that makes me furious. I don't like to win without a fight. Herr Detweiler, while you were gone, you had a long-distance call from Berlin. Who could be calling me from Berlin? They said you know who it was. Oh, thank you, Franz. Georg, what were we just talking about? Max, this isn't the first call you've had from Berlin. Georg, you know I have no political convictions. Can I help it if other people do? Let's not stir that up again. Georg, the Germans have promised not to invade Austria. Max knows that. Then why does he bother to answer those calls from Berlin? Because if they don't keep their promise, I'd like to have some friends among them. Naturally. Oh, you agree too? Georg. This is the way I look at it. There was a man who was dying. They were giving him the last rites. They asked him, do you rebuke the devil and all his works? And he said, at this moment, I prefer not to make any enemies. Georg, if they, if they should invade us, would you defy them? Yes! Do you realize what might happen to you? To your property? To your children! To everyone close to you? To Elsa? To me? Well, what will you do if they come? What anyone with any sense would do. Just sit tight and wait for it all to blow over. And you think it will? One thing is certain. Nothing you can do will make any difference. Don't look so serious, darling. Take the world off your shoulders. Relax. You dear attractive dewy-eyed idealist. Today you have to learn to be a realist. You may be bent on doing deeds of daring do. But up against a show can a herring do. Be wise, compromise. Compromise and be wise. I will not bow my head to the man I despise. You won't have to bow your head, just stoop a little. Why not learn to put your faith in your reliance on an obvious and simple fact of science? A crazy plan full of crazy people is somersaulting all I'd circle around the sun And when we circle back to where we started from Another year has Special feature. 
Reverend Mother, have I your permission to look at myself? I brought a mirror, it's in my suitcase. Sister Bertha. Sister Margareta! I don't think she's had time to put in the linings yet. Sister Bertha, the mirror. Reverend Mother, I look... Don't be vain, my daughter. Let me say it for you. You are indeed beautiful.
How do you solve a problem like Maria? Children! Um, festival 938. The Von Trapp family singers. And here are all your names Liesel, Friedrich, Louisa, Kurt, Brigitte, Martin, and Gretel. Why am I always last? Because you're the youngest. Liesel, I'm depending on you. The day after tomorrow, you must have all the children ready at 11 o'clock. That's when the bus leaves. Herr Zettweiler, can you help me, please? Uh, the Gauleiter is here. He wants to know why we aren't flying the new flag. Heil? Uh, I tried to explain. Keep quiet. When is Captain Von Trapp returning? Who knows? When a man is on his honeymoon. These are not times for joking. It has been four days since the Anschluss. And this is the only house in the province not flying the flag of the Third Reich. Is that the flag with the black spider on it? Brigitte? Do you permit such remarks in this house? Who are you? I am Maximilian Detweiler, first secretary of the Ministry of Education and Culture. That was in the old regime. In the old regime, I was third secretary. Now, I'm first secretary. Good. Then you will order them to fly the flag. Captain Von Trapp, what it, I, um, I mean, I, I can take my orders only from Captain Von Trapp, sir. You will take your orders from us. And so will the captain. Heil! Heil. Why was he so cross? Everybody's cross these days. Is father going to be in trouble? He doesn't have to be. The thing to do today is to get along with everybody. Now, Liesel, I need you. Tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock is when the bus comes. You must have all the children ready. Uncle Max, is father going to be all right with this? Oh, he'll be pleased and proud. Liesel, do you think so? Brigitta, 
Don't you trust me? No. Well, the bus leaves at 11. Forlan Liesel, see what I have here. That's Father's luggage. Yes, they're back. Father! Liesel, they'll have so much to tell us. Let's not hurry about telling them anything. Oh. Max! Georg! We didn't expect you back until next week. Max, it's good you're here. There's much I want to talk to you about. Children, we missed you all so very much. What did you miss most? Well, we missed all that noise you make in the morning. <laughs> that noise you make telling each other to be quiet. We missed climbing up the stairs to say goodnight to you. We missed hearing you sing. You came back just in time to hear us sing. Look, Father, we're going to be singing in the Hallsburg Festival Friday night. Let me see that. <gasps> Max, are you responsible for this? Georg, I've just been waiting to talk to you about it. You can't talk your way out of this one. Presents! 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 I want the. Let's open these in the nursery. Look, Georg, I was lucky to even be able to enter them at all. They'll be the talk of the festival. Seven children in one family. Not my family! The committee heard them. They were enchanted. Really, Max? What did they say? Oh, you never heard such praise. Oh, Georg, did you hear? The Von Trapp family does not sing in public. But if they make people happy... And for the festival, people come from all over the world. It is out of the question. It's for Austria. There is no Austria. Georg, the Anschluss happened peacefully. Let's at least be grateful for that. Grateful? To these swine? Maria, I admire the way he feels, but he must at least pretend to work with these people. You must convince him. He has to compromise. No, Max. Maria, you must. Max. I can't ask Georg to be less than what he is. You must talk to him. Then I will. If these children don't sing in the festival, it'd be a reflection on Austria. And it wouldn't do me any good. Maria, I've always known that you've loved us children, but now I know you have a father too. I do, Liesel. I love him very much. But how did you know? Because I don't think first of myself anymore. I think first of him. I know now how to spend my love. A bell is no bell till you ring it. A song is no song till you sing it. And love in your heart wasn't put there to stay. Love isn't love till you give it away. When you're 16, going on 17, waiting for life to start, somebody kind who touches your mind will suddenly touch your heart. After it happens, nothing is quite the same. Somehow you know you jump up and go if ever he calls your name. Gone are your old ideas of life, the old ideas grow dim. So when we hold for someone's wife, and you belong with him. You may think this kind of adventure never may come to you. Darling, sixteen, going on seventeen. Mother, my new mother. Rolf, I'm glad to meet you, finally. 
I have a telegram for Captain Von Trapp. Will you stay here with Liesl? I'll take it to him. I'm under orders to ensure the captain gets it. I think you can trust me to give it to him. I have my orders. Silly, they're married. Ah, uh, Franz, this telegram is delivered into the hands of Captain Von Trapp. Hi, Uncle. Hi. Rolf! Even Franz. Yes, even Franz, even me, even everybody in Nottenberg. Except the great Captain Von Trapp. And if he knows what's good for him, he'll come over to the right side. Rolf, don't talk like that! And if he doesn't, he better get out of the country. There are things that happen today to a man like that. He better get out quick. Oh. I don't know what this is. Remember what I said before it's too late. And you remember too. Don't cry, Liesl. How could he betray father like that? Well, maybe he wasn't threatening father. Maybe he was warning him. What is it, Georg? I didn't think I would have to come to a decision this soon. Berlin has just offered me a commission in their navy. Well, Georg? I can't just brush this aside. I admit it would be exciting to have a ship under me again. What I mean is it would be a relief and a comfort to know that you and the children are safe. But it also means, Maria, help me. Georg, whatever you decide will be my decision. Thank you. I know now I can't do it. Of course not. We'll have to get out of Austria right away. Well, you'll have to leave tonight. Now. Not without my family. And we can't just pick up and leave. They'll be watching us now. We'll have to plan. We'll have to have time. Hoyle! Admiral von Schreiber of the Navy of the Third Reich is here to see you. Thank you, Franz. They didn't give us time. Then we'll have to make time. I'll bring him in. We must be careful. What's happening? Maria, stormtroopers. This is exactly what I was afraid of. Max, you stay here with Georg. Liesel, I need to find the children. Quickly, find the children. Admiral von Schrager, may I present Herr Detweiler? Max, I think you know Herr Zeller. Would you gentlemen care to sit down? We are here on business. Captain von Trapp, a telegram was sent to you three days ago. I have just received it. I've been away. I've only been home half an hour. The captain has just returned from his honeymoon, sir. Congratulations, Captain. Thank you, sir. Your record in the war is very well remembered by us, Captain. It's good to hear you say that, sir. Let us get to the point. If you don't mind, in our name, we hold you to very high regard. That explains why I'm here. Having no answer to our telegram, how can man send me here in person? It's very flattering, Admiral, but I've had no time to consider. I'm here to present you with your commission. I'm deeply conscious of the honor, Admiral, but... And the orders are to report immediately to the naval base in Bremerhaven. Immediately? Oh, I'm afraid that would be impossible for you, Georg. Admiral, may I present my wife, the Baroness von Trapp? Madam, what I meant, sir, is that we're all going to be performing in the Telsberg Festival Friday night. It's here in the program for the Trap Family Singers. It's all been arranged by the Ministry of Education and Culture, sir. Friday night? Why, this is a Wednesday. That's only a matter of two days. It may be possible you could report to Bremerhaven in my Monday. Admiral! Is there a telephone I could use? Right this way, Admiral. And if there's any question, please allow me to add the weight of my voice. Captain, it gives you all the names of the children. It says the Von Trapp family singers. I'm head of the Von Trapp family. It is a little hard to believe, Captain Von Trapp. You, singing in a concert. Herr Zeller, you may believe what you choose. Captain Von Trapp, it doesn't say here what you are going to sing. What songs are you going to sing? It's your privilege to come to the concert and hear us. No, I would like to hear you sing now. Sing what you are going to sing in the concert. Sing! Will you give us a do? Do, do, a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun. Me a name I call myself. Far a long, long way to run. 
so long, farewell, I'll be there saying adieu, 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 to you and you and you. So long, farewell, I'll be there saying goodbye, we flit, we float, we 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 fly. So long, farewell, all be there saying goodbye. The sun has gone to bed and so must I. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, I have here the final decision of our distinguished judges. We'll start with the third award. This honor goes to the Sangerbund Trio of Herwegen. And now, the second prize. This honor has been bestowed to Fraulein Schweiger, first soloist of St. Agatha's Church in Murbach. I know 
over those mountains as well as I know this garden. And once we're over them, we're in Switzerland. But the children. We can help them. But, Father, we can do it without help. You'll have help. For ye shall go forth with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall bring forth glory. 